we were in Ibiza and keen to go and explore. We hitched a ride with the Summers and were formally introduced to Hans, Kristen and the girls from Positive Waves, an American-Swedish cruising family. The kids immediately all started playing together and despite having literally only just met them, we left the kids with Hans and the rest of the adults went for a walk. This gave us the opportunity to get to know Kristen a bit more and swap sailing stories. Positive Waves have been cruising for four years now and have made this lovely pattern. If only they'd been to Brazil and back, then they could have drawn a dog. Having sailed across the Atlantic twice, they are a proper cruising family. Wow. The walk also gave us beautiful views and a lizard. I still can't get over the fact that there are lizards here. I love them. So fast. They're so fast. Back at the beach, and Hugh and Hans took the kids to do some jumping in. Three, two. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do something incredibly impressive. Oh yeah, yeah. There we go. Okay, I don't know what it is yet. Yeah, very impressive, Hugh. Green saving. <laughs> <laughs> well done, Jenny. That's Cannonball! Thanks, Dan. Woo! One, go! Meanwhile, back on the beach, John, Elaine and I were making sure that we could say that we had been clubbing in Ibiza. She's just clubbing in Ibiza. And then the evening was for socialising, where everybody brought something to share. We thought we saw a barracuda. Yeah. Yeah. It kind of looks about yeah. it. It does, yeah. Isn't that? Isn't that I don't know. Wow. You give what you can while you're cruising. Hugh volunteered to give all the kids a brass lesson. And then we left this lovely anchorage and headed round the corner. Oh yeah, sorry, Kelly's been training now for the last uh, few months, running regularly and um, lifting pumping weights, iron. pumping the iron. And today, she lifted up the second half of the sail all by herself. <laughs> Look at her face. I think she could have done the whole thing, but I did the first half. But I think what we're, what we're getting to is the point where we, soon Kelly will be on camera proving that she can hoist the main sail all on her lonesome, which on Esperance is a bit of a job to be honest, because we've got only the small wind working and the sail that's probably heavier than me. So uh, yeah, anyway, well done, my lover. It's very good. Your iron is truly pumping. <laughs> got the best, best geeky minds on the job, trying to get pole position. Got my, got my tactician, <laughs> my navigator tactician in here. Optimise if we optimise when we put the tack in. Right, I think so it's about now, is... personally, but I just can so, wait for him to finish okay, calculations. Is this 45 degrees from here? From it was a lovely passage, and we even managed to squeeze in a roast dinner. It must have been a Sunday. We set anchor and had a lovely dip. Before hitching yet another ride to shore, we hadn't actually used our dinghy in months and it was still packed away on the foredeck being used as a storeroom. We went for a walk and then ended up meeting with our new American friends for a drink. 
Oh, yummy, yummy, yummy. Wait, that looks like an egg. Is that an egg? Egg juice? Oh my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> it's, an egg in it. it's an egg juice. The next day we left Hugh to go and do some boat jobs and we headed off on a hike to the lighthouse. Can you do just like right? Can we do As beautiful as Ibiza is, we can only take a snapshot of how we experience it, and these anchorages were incredibly rolly. It's not great for all sorts of reasons. So we spent as much time on land as possible, and then do what we could to counteract it. When visiting Kendra, who were a bit more stable as they had put their kedge anchor out, we noticed that Esperance was swinging wildly. Do you think, do you think we should, should, we, should we put a kedge out? Look at that little Esperance. Oh, blimey. It's just got, it's settling down now, but a minute ago it almost touched the water. <laughs> yeah, while it's out the water. <laughs> Looking forward to a good night's sleep, Cal. Oh, uh, do you know what? We left the place in a mess. It's all going to be like, yeah, we didn't shut the, all the cupboards are going to be open, aren't they? <laughs> we didn't lock any of the cupboards. No, we didn't lock the cupboards. Oh, we Christ. Right, oh. we're going to sort this out. John just asked if Esperance has been sick whilst we were away. So has the boat been sick? In a short, yes, the boat has been sick. Christ on a bike. Right, kedge anchor time. We are kedging. The kedge anchor. So we have our regular anchor, which secures us to the seabed and stops us from leaving the anchorage. A kedge, however, is an additional, more lightweight anchor that, in this instance, we will put out behind us to try and keep us facing nose on to the swell, back and forth rolling being preferable to side to side. So we've got a kedge out. It's sort of a, a bit better. It definitely is better, better. The kedge is on a scope of about 20 to 1, if anyone knows what that means. Uh, the anchor's in about four metres of water right over by the beach, and it's about hundred meters away <laughs> but anyway i might have put a line i bought like a mark full of boys on the line so that people will trip it in the night anyway kel and the kids are still over on kendra and i've got a few minutes before john brings them back or the will paddleboard back and i'm just going to try and tidy up a little bit anyway lesson learnt. um shut the hatches like the catches before we leave but it was still too rolly to be enjoyable, so we all went out for a pizza tea. That does not work, and it's illegal. Literally illegal. 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 This became the new dish of the trip. Uh. <laughs> so, what is the seasoning inside? Snake, Lisa, Afro Lisa. Okay. Oh. Night, We don't need it. We don't need it. Yeah. One more. One more. We have 
Oh, yeah. uh, is it a drink you drink slowly or is it a drink you drink no. fast? Uh, yeah. Uh, 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 what do you want? What do you want to do? It's aniseed. I can smell the aniseed. Oh, aniseed. Oh, I do like aniseed. Ooh. It smells amazing. I like it already. I'm just going to smell it. It smells like a chance of sleeping. Yeah, that's true. Oh, that's lovely. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's pretty nice. Ah. And hers, yeah. Uzu, is that ring your yeah. bell? Uzu. 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 Yeah, Uzu. Positive Waves, being sensible, seasoned pros, made the call to leave the anchorage that night, whilst we Brits toughed it out. So last week, John, under the water, he dove under his boat and he replaced his propeller anode. Ours also needs doing. I was asking John for some advice, and he was like, oh yeah, it's not too tricky. Um, but you know, you need a few bits of gear to be able to hold yourself under the water, which is where I was struggling the other week when I was checking the propeller. He said, you've got a weight belt. I was like, oh no. He goes, okay, well, you can borrow mine. He goes, you've got a wetsuit? Yeah, I've got that. He goes, you got fins? You're gonna need fins. I haven't got that. And he was just like, okay, I'm just gonna do it for you. So that's cool. So basically on the shopping list, we need some fins and a weight belt and things like that to help us dive better. But in this instance, John's just said, tell you what, I'll pop over and uh, just do it for you, which is wicked. It's gonna, let's go and have some fun. <laughs> a a shite in diving art, whatever it is. <laughs> shite, yeah. I think that's probably closer to the truth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> His first mission, however, was to rescue our washing holder that we had somehow managed to drop overboard that morning. It was all going well. A few bolts were dropped and recovered, and a fish even took one. Fucking fish had there. The fish picked up the bolt. Oh, Christ. I wasn't expecting that. I think it dropped it again. So I don't And also, the fact that John had to breathe added to the job, but he still made it look easy. What a pro. Thanks, John. Inspired by John, we went on a family snorkeling session. This was the last footage that our GoPro ever took, as a small crack caused the non-waterproof housing to be less than waterproof. But at least we got these shots before it died. We could all take the rocking and rolling no more, so together with the Summers we decided to leave Ibiza and head for Mallorca. This passage was a catalogue of minor disasters. Not only was it a lumpy passage, but an eventful one too. A close hauled, so we're healing quite a lot. That's not like, I think that's the horizon. That's about it. It's feeding time. Like in their house, four to five degrees, and then making dinner. You managed, like, you managed it. Japanese Just put that knife away. Yeah. Action shot. Looks like I'm like over exaggerating here, but I'm really not. Then your hands have a drink holder. The prevailing wind for the 50 mile passage was dead on the nose, meaning that we had to tack back and forth, sailing close hauled to reach our destination. As we all know, winds can be fickle and often flit and change direction. If one is an astute sailor, one can read these wind shifts and adjust accordingly to make the most and to keep the boat sailing quickly as possible on a direct course to the finish. 
As the crow flies, the passage was 50 nautical miles. Tacking up wind every few degrees, closer to the wind, can make a big difference. Today was Kendra's day. John's superior dinghy racing knowledge showed it best today. Our log shows we covered over 66 nautical miles of ground. This is Kendra's log. And not only that, they managed to sail the entire way and arrive four hours before us. Meanwhile, we ended up in all the wrong places and had to motor for half of the passage. Not to make excuses, but we did get distracted by a few things en route. We observed a crunching sound coming from the steering gear under our bed. It turned out that the quadrant had slipped down, so that, as it worked back and forth steering the boat, it was now rubbing against part of the bed frame. We worryingly noticed that salt water was in our bilge. Hopefully this was just something to do with the loose quadrant. We were not able to do a proper investigation at sea other than monitor it and assess it and make sure that we weren't instantly going to sink the boat. Also, whilst hammering along close hauled in a fresh Force 5 breeze, Hugh thought now would be a good opportunity to inspect the rig tensions. He proceeded to get himself in a bit of a worry as he suspected that port and starboard shrouds were not evenly tensioned. We are in a 17 knots of wind apparent, very close hauled on port tap. That forward one is tight. Number two, the thin one, fairly tight, but definitely slacker than on the other side. The third one, the big thick one, is pretty loose actually. Uh, right, there's quite a lot of movement on that. I'll see it vibrated up there as I jiggle it. Um, number four, nice and strong and tight. Number five, a bit loose, definitely looser than on the other side. So, worth noting those facts. Just to add to that, out of the blue, some of our nav gear stopped working with the wind gauge getting stuck and not reading correctly. And for some reason, our VHF antenna was playing up and then the Axion just decided to switch off. And then the final master pen stroke. We ran out of diesel. Believe it or not, it was sort of planned. Remember the paper in the tank incident? This, along with suspected diesel bug, led Hugh to formulate the plan to drain one of our tanks at a time so that we could inspect and clean them. Hugh's very clever plan was at the moment he heard the engine begin to stutter, he would immediately leap into action and switch over to the second full tank. Needless to say, that went as well as many an over-ambitious plan. Here is Hugh subsequently trying to bleed a very air-filled line whilst we wallow around in the sea state created by the previous fresh breeze. All in all, it took us 14 hours from dusk to dawn. We put all of that behind us for now and we went off to explore. So we needed to investigate the saltwater ingress and we called our insurance company who rightly wanted us to get it checked out. We were therefore grounded for a while. We were left in limbo. The summers left us for the other side of the island, so we were entertaining ourselves as best we could. It's happening. Kelly is wearing entirely all Eric's clothes. They don't, they're a bit short. They're a bit short, but they, you're getting there. They all fit. <laughs> Kelly are boys' clothes. <laughs> No, 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 no. It's 11! Come on! Hyper speed! We weren't totally alone. We met a lovely Dutch family and a French family too, no footage, and our Danish friends from Sailing Fionia came and anchored nearby. Anyway, tune in next time to see what we had to do to try and stop our boat from sinking. Oh, there's never a dull moment. I love it! See you next time! <laughs>